everyone. So this is not a review. Just want to make that clear about the Tamron 2240. This is actually a wake up call. I'm selling all my lenses and I'm keeping this one. I'm actually shooting this video using the Tamron 2240. Let's get into it. So recently, I got the Tamron 2240 and what a lens. I mean, wow. My idea with this lens was that I could sell all of my lenses and keep just the one. Now, the purpose of that is because I always look for ways to be more minimalistic and intentional with my possessions. And I've been using this lens for a couple of weeks. And you know what? It surpassed my expectations. Now, it's not perfect. There are certain things that I need to mention that I don't like about it, but in overall, it's just awesome. Now, let me start with the good things. The zoom range is perfect for someone with my needs. It's got that wide 20 millimeter view, which is great for vlogging. You combine that with the dynamic image stabilization of the Sony ZV-E1, and you get a nice walk and talk vlogging system. Zooming all the way up to 40 millimeters or 35, as I prefer. It's really great for those tight shots, like this one right here. And the f2.8, it's, it's good enough. You know, it doesn't offer a, as much bokeh as an f1.4, you know, the background blur. But I think that bokeh is a bit overrated if you really think about it. Now, f2.8 is great on a full frame because it offers great low light performance. Now, one of the most surprising elements of this lens is that it's actually very compact and weighs very little. I mean, for a full frame zoom lens, I don't really think that there is anything smaller. Now, another surprising thing is that it can focus at a very close distance. I think it's something like 17 centimeters, which is really impressive compared to most of my lenses. Now, it's not exactly a macro lens, but it's close enough, you know? It's also weather sealed and the focusing is quite fast and quiet. I haven't had any issues. The focus breathing is hardly there. Now, there are two things that I think I need to mention about this lens that I don't like about it. The, the one big one for me is that it zooms in reverse, meaning this is 40, but, but when you extend the lens, it becomes 20 millimeters. Now I can get used to it, but there's a part of me that just goes, ah, I hate this. Why did you do that? You know? Now the other thing is that the focusing ring turns a bit too loose. Like I like a little bit of resistance, you know, when I'm focusing. But most of the time I use autofocus, so it's not a deal breaker for me. Now, this lens, it's not for everyone and it's not for all situations. So for example, uh, this last Christmas, I was actually using the Tamron 28 to 75 and it was actually quite perfect for it. And I don't think that this lens, the Tamron 20 to 40 would have been as good. I, I would not recommend it for something like wedding photography, for example. Now, technically you do have like an APS-C mode on a lot of Sony full-frame cameras, like the Sony ZV-E1, where you can get more zoom by doing something called clear image zoom without reducing image quality. Now, speaking of image quality, honestly, I'm not the guy to ask. I'm not so picky when it comes to image quality. I think this looks good. I take a bunch of photos and videos, and I think that I'm not seeing anything in the shots that makes me think that this is a bad lens. And also I want to talk about the price. I think that pricing is very important. Now it's not a cheap lens, but considering how many lenses it could potentially replace, I would say that the price is fair. All in all, I'm very pleased with the lens. I feel confident that I can sell my other lenses. The only lens that I'm not too keen on selling is the Tamron 28 to 75 because it does offer a lot of range in different scenarios. But we'll see how it goes. Anyway, full disclosure, this year I'm selling all or most of my lenses anyway. So um, see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.